morning, everyone. Welcome to Treyer Wilderness. Oh, what a crazy morning it has been. I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you have as nice of weather as I have today. As you can see behind me, it is a beautiful, beautiful sunny day here in northern Idaho. Maybe I'll take you over there. See if I can do this because technology is not working again today. So bear with me as I do this. Okay, look at this. It is just gorgeous. <laughs> my birds have been enjoying my feeders, and it is oh, the sunshine. You saw the old man sitting here at the door, he is just loving the fresh air. So, how are you guys today? I'm not seeing any comments. I'm seeing people there. So chime in. Where are you joining me from? Who's out there? And I have to guess we are going to have technological difficulties today because I'm this way instead of this way again. Uh, Facebook is not cooperating, but we're here. We're here. And I see you there. Hopefully um, you can hear me. Let me see. Aha, Tammy has joined. Let's see. If I can, nope, I don't want to do that. So let's put that back down. Oop, now I done it. Now I got stuff on the screen. There we go. Okay, Shelly is joining me. Tammy, good morning. Okay, so I got comments. Okay, that's good. Oh, I got to take a deep breath. We have been scrambling today. We have a lot on our plates. We are in, I told you last week, a new season. The season is like chaos. It's just such a fast pace and there is a lot going on, but we are, yeah, I know I'm upright. I can't, won't, it won't flip. So the heck with it. You got me this way today, <laughs> but we, we are just, we are abundantly blessed right now, but there is, I mean, we are just whooped trying to keep up and adjust to all the changes. Um, we have a showing of our house today at 11.45, and it is almost 10.45, so I won't be on long today. I've gotta, gotta watch my time. But this is awesome. We have a showing of the house, and we have a lot of chaos in our future, but we have some really good goals and plans ahead for ourselves, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So tell me, how are you guys today? And have you been progressing? I know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know Miss Tammy was working on all kinds of things, but felt like she was in a, a uh, hamster wheel and doing a lot, but not getting a lot accomplished. And we all tend to feel like that from time to time, right? I mean, that's just common. We Life is constantly changing. We are constantly walking into new seasons and we are constantly having to adjust. How many of us are good at adjusting? I learned that early in my adult life that I needed to adjust. Um, with having a high functioning autistic son um, who in his early years was very sporadic in his behaviors and, and um, just required me to be ready to switch gears on a dime and I'm right there again. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Shelly says she's praying about our showing. Yes, we are asking for God's will. And now I'm going to share this with you. You know, we are not promised a bed of roses and a box of good chocolates in our lives. We are going to go through good times, bad times, ugly times like we talked about last week. If you missed that last week, go back to last week's video and watch it. Um, because it's really important that we realize that, you know, a lot of people know, um, that are new Christians feel that once they become a Christian, um, instantly everything is going to be amazing. And my life is amazing, but I make it that way. And it's because God is in the forefront and I trust God for everything, even when things aren't going well. And... We've got a showing today. Last night, um, we were in, enjoying a Prime video from Amazon, and we decided to shut the generator down because we had one to charge the batteries. And as soon as we shut the generator off, the solar alarm went off, which means that the batteries are empty or low and need to be recharged. And we just had them charging for an hour. 
So, if you're new to solar, what that means is our batteries just tanked on us. They are no good anymore. They are no longer holding a charge. Now, right now, I have power by the grace of God because there is sun on my panels and it is bypassing my batteries into my system. But that's a big expense. But still, in the long run, we are way ahead financially in it when you compare um, solar power to electric power. Um, we have a $21,000 system that we paid $13,000 for. And that was back in 2010. In 2015, if I calculated what my average electric bill was prior to moving here, we paid off our system. So we haven't been paying electric for the last five years. So to have to invest money for batteries, and they are expensive. They're three, when we purchased them, they were $350 a piece, and we need eight of them eight or 16. Um, so, you know, you do the math, that's pretty, pretty big amount there. But God is abundantly blessing us. And if you haven't noticed in your life, when you have a need, God provides, if you're paying attention. And God provides for our needs as he see fit, sees fit. So sometimes we're not in a line with what he's wanting to do. And sometimes we need to readjust that. But, you know, it was a, it was a kind of a smack in the face last night that we have a showing today. And also knowing that there's some future things upcoming that are going to cause hurdles for us. Um, it was, it was not a good piece of information to gather last night. However, you know, we really do trust God, and when those situations happen, we might grumble, but we do say, you know what, God's got a plan. He's been providing and protecting us for these last four years. I mean, in our financial situation, we should have been homeless four years ago. So God has been providing, God has been nurturing, God has been ever-present, and I just want to remind you guys that regardless what it is you're walking out I want you to remember that. And I want you to try to learn to um, still find the good and be grateful and thankful through the good, the bad, and the ugly because it really does benefit you. So that being said, finding the joy in the chaos. I did a podcast on that at the end of last year. You can listen to that on my Mountain Woman radio. I mean... We have choices and, you know, when stuff like this does happen, you know, there are times where you don't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay in bed and it would be a lot easier, right? I mean, I'd be lying if I said I haven't been in that place already, but you got to really grab your bootstraps and you got to really focus on what you can do as you can do it as you walk through this stuff. So... Keep your motivation alive and find things to progressively work your way through. If you look at the big scheme of things and all the things that you need to do and all the goals and all the plans you have listed and you overwhelm yourself, you're not going to be you're not going to be doing any favors for yourself, right? So, that's why I thought talking about, well, I didn't think Again, half hour before we started this, last week it was five minutes, but God showed me two things on setting goals and planning, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Because we have some good stuff also going on right now. Not only do we have a showing of our house, um, the mountain man has work, and we'll talk more about that in the future. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But we have a plan and yesterday, we even walked up to take a look at our plan. Um, I've talked about building a tiny house. And we've, in essence, been gifted a piece of land to build on. My in-laws live in Pennsylvania, where Glenn was born and raised, as was I born and raised. And um, they purchased a parcel very, very close to ours. It's... Within a quarter mile 
of our property, current property. And knowing our circumstances, knowing we need to try to get back on our feet, they have gifted us a portion of that land so that we can build on. And we've had a lot of ideas brewing. Um, Elizabeth, one of our audience members, had gifted us their um, 160-acre off-grid ranch to stay in also, which is like three and a half hours north of us, um, if we suddenly didn't have a place to live. And that is awesome. That's still there in the background for us. If for a person that comes today buys our property and we suddenly have to get out, um, that'll give us a safer place to live than a wall tent through winter. But we're not sure what we're going to do yet. Um, we're, we're really looking to God for our direction. So we walked up there yesterday kind of just to walk away and clear our heads. We've been a little overwhelmed the last three days with just everything. And um, when you get that way and there's so much, sometimes you just need to walk away and that's what's healthy. <coughs> so we did. But we've been drawing out the plans for our home. And uh, yesterday we walked up and we were kind of mapping out what we we're going to do on that land. So it was pretty exciting. And it's pretty exciting having a plan, having ideas in mind, um, seeking God's guidance and direction in, in the plan that we formulate because we want to be following God's plan for us. And um, I know uh, building a home and having a spare bedroom also gives the mountain boy comfort knowing that he has a place to stay when he comes home from school. I will be seeing him Friday. I'm excited about that. And I am going to do a video with him to update you guys on how he's doing there. I wanted to do it over Christmas, but there was just too much going on. And his first visit home... There was just, it just didn't work out. It, we were just too excited to see each other, I think. So this time, even though it'll be the same, I'm going to make it a point to do a video with him. So you can make your own goodness through the chaos. You can um, have plans and dreams and goals that kind of lead you through the chaos. Because when you have a plan, wouldn't you all agree that when you have a plan of sorts, it's exciting and you have kind of a structure, if you will, um, something to guide you, um, something to keep your mind occupied rather than focusing on the negative, which a lot of people do. I mean, I was guilty in my, in my you know, t late teens and early 20s of worrying about all kinds of crazy stuff that really, I laugh at it now because it was just absolute silliness, but that's what we do. And when you're, what, dependent on our upbringings too, uh, we are uh, creatures of the environment that was created for us. So sometimes that requires us to change. So that's why we're talking about setting goals and having plans. Um, how many of you know somebody that is up in their years and they've worked hard their whole life and they've never done anything for themselves. They've never, you know, they, they might have even shared their dreams with you of the things they wanted to do and never accomplished any of them. I know people like that. And I'm a go-getter because I don't ever want to be that person. I want to be able to be comfortable enough to um, and willing enough to embrace my dream if that puts me in an uncomfortable place. Because a lot of times our biggest dreams and our goals and our plans may require us to step out of our comfort zone to achieve them. And that is truly what holds people back. Okay, Tammy says, I agree about plans. They are so helpful for focus. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Shelly says, I'm always making plans knowing that life happens and they may have to be changed. That is great. I'm glad you shared that because that is extremely important because a lot of times what people do after they hear something like what I'm going to share with you, they make all these plans, they set all these goals, they have these dreams, life happens and they get discouraged, they get angered, they get upset, they get debilitated, they get depressed and any other negative words you want to throw in there, but they don't 
conquer their dreams and they don't go back to their original plans. And, and that's important. We have to be able to shuffle and adjust to what life throws our way. And we have to be able to also get back on course and get that ship back on the right track, right? None of it's easy, um, but it takes effort. It takes discipline. Discipline is extremely important in these situations. It's no different than setting, um, uh, creating new habits. I shared with you about the silverware the other week that we had moved it over the holidays so our table was clear because this is what I have on my table. I don't know if you can see that, but I have my cast iron piece with our you know, salt and pepper and napkins and silverware on there. I hope, I hope you could see that. Well, I'm, oops. Okay, I moved it. And then week two after everybody left, I moved it back. Well, it was in the new place for a month. <laughs> so both of us kept going to its new location instead of back to its original location to get the spoons and forks. Another thing I just recently did is I changed my passcode on my iPad and on my iPhone. Guess what I keep entering in my phone? The old one. So we can very quickly create new habits. It just requires us to adjust. And creating goals and having plans and having dreams and following through on those and being disciplined is a habit that you need to put in place. So, good morning, Ken. So creating that habit and, and putting that in place, whoa, the machine is doing funny things. Everything all right? Okay. Do you need my help then? No. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for all you're doing. Okay. So I'm going to read these to you. Let's see here. Have clearly established goals for your life. Philippians 3.14. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. I want you guys to to write down that reference, Philippians 3, 14. And I want you to remind yourself of that because a lot of times our goals and our plans and our dreams are divinely inspired, whether you realize that or not. We are within by the Spirit and we take a hold of that and we go with that. We are being led down a path to what we are called to do, if we listen. Good morning, Miss Angela. So, I love this story. In 1972, Life Magazine published a story about the amazing adventures of John Goddard. When he was 15, his grandmother said, if only I had done that when I was young. How many times have us heard that? Or how many times have we have, said, have heard people say, I wish I would have done? Determined not to make that statement at the end of his life, John wrote out 127 goals. He named 10 rivers he wanted to explore, 17 mountains he wanted to climb. He set goals of becoming an Eagle Scout, a world traveler, and a pilot. Also, on his list was riding a horse in the Rose Bowl Parade, diving in a submarine, retracing the travels of Marco Polo, reading the Bible from cover to cover, and reading the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. He also planned to read the entire works of Shakespeare, Plato, Dickens, Socrates, Aristotle, and several other classic authors. He desired to learn to play the flute and violin, marry, have children. He had five. Pursue career in medicine and serve as a missionary for his church. Sound impossible? Yeah, if you tried to do all 127 today. But at age 47, he accomplished 103 of his 127 goals. Now your list of goals may not be as extensive as his, but if you don't have some goals for your life, you'll have little motivation to get up in the morning and little satisfaction when you put your head on your pillow each night. It's very true. And unless you try something beyond what you're already, you've already mastered, you won't grow. So set your goals in prayer 
and with God's help, work toward them each day. So that sums it up. You know, we need to seek God. And, and, and you know what? If you don't know, if you are that in that, um, if you are in a place where you can't even think of something that you would want to accomplish, you need to pray that God will encourage you, inspire you, and show you. Because everybody needs a purpose in life. Everybody needs accomplishments in life. And we need to keep learning to keep growing. As we learn in life, we grow. If we're not willing to learn, uh, seek knowledge, or um, attempt anything new, we're never gonna grow, we're never gonna learn, we're gonna be stagnant and, and bored out of our minds, unsettled and, and not understanding why. And we're gonna live a life with no purpose. I don't wanna get to the end of my life and not have done anything with purpose. I want to have purpose in my life. I want to make a difference. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Ken said, preach it, sister. <laughs> but it's true, you know, I because we live the way we do and we are back here the way we are, when I go out, I feel like I see so many lifeless people. So many people seeking happiness in the wrong things, seeking joy. And, and or, or or just in a very terrible mind place, unhappy, unhappy with life, their marriage, their job, and and they don't see anything good around them. And it's really depressing to me <laughs> because my life is full. I keep my days busy. I constantly am learning and I have goals in my life. Not only do the mountain man and I have the goal, of building our tiny house. We also have had the dream, especially him since he was very young, like seven, to live in Alaska. And not just in Alaska, but way back in Alaska. Like two hours away from anything, 200 miles away from anything. Deep in, that we can live that and experience that. A lot of people think we're crazy, but that is something that is very passionate for us. We are extremely passionate about it. We want to experience it. So that is on our list. And we will achieve it. It may not be today. It may not be next year. But we will achieve it. And it's one of those things that I can't, you know, we can't wait till we're, you know, in our 70s to embrace that. And wait till we're retired. And the thing is, in making dreams and goals, we do not, and let me repeat that, we do not need to follow the mold of society. There are so many people, and you will hear in my next reading, I believe it is in the next reading, either that or it was in the book I was reading last night, but so many people felt it necessary to graduate, go to college, get a job, work that job, work in a job that gave them no fulfillment, no meaning in life. It, it was something that, they, that the family felt they had to do, so they did it to make other people happy. They lived their whole life that way and never did what was on their heart and what they were called to do. We can make life whatever we want it to be as long as we are responsible and we go about it in the right way that we are risk take responsible risk takers. And next week I'm going to share a book with you that you guys have to read. Shelley says my neighbor is 76 and is still taking courses like physiotherapy, accounting and anything that piques her interest. I think that is so awesome. When my kids were little, I this is really funny, but I actually sold Tupperware because my mother owned a franchise and I was helping her get it started. And um, I had a 75 year old woman helping me, um, you know, do the different things I needed to do to stay organized and, and keep things rolling. And I swear, she was a 30 year old in a 75 year old's body. She was a hoot. She refused to slow down. She refused to stop learning and she refused to not have fun. She went to visit her son in Wisconsin 
and they went to a Harley dealer and she was she was sitting on all the Harleys getting pictures. I mean, she was just such a, a wild go-getter. And you know what? Those are the kind of people that fuel my fire. She didn't care if she did things different. She didn't care if she wasn't doing things that other people her age were supposed to be doing, supposed to be doing. She was making life what she wanted it to be. And, and that is just so, so important for us to remember. We're, many of us are, are young and have a lot of life ahead of us. And, and you, you young people that are following me, you know, in your 20s and, and, and teens, please hear me because I wish I would have learned a lot of what I teach you sooner. But the thing is, as we learn it, we got to share it and we got to embrace it and we got to be willing to put the effort forth. Nothing comes to us without effort. My mother-in-law continues to learn new things too. Awesome. Awesome. And that's, that's a thing. I mean, it's just, to me, that's invigorating and it's really fun to take up new skills and new talents and, and be able to do things for ourselves. Many of us are homesteading and what we learn enables us to be more self-reliant, more prepared, uh, and, and more frugal in a lot of ways, because when we're doing these things for ourselves, you know, we're saving money. So remember these things. Now I want to read to you. A goal without a plan is just a wish. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. I want you to write that one down too. That is Proverbs 21, five. So look that one up later and write it in your journal or on a piece of paper, just with, and along with the other one that I shared earlier. Um, Proverbs 21, five. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. We have to put our effort forth. God will bless us, but he's not going to bless us if we're sitting on the couch watching TV, eating bonbons. We need to meet him on this path, and he will provide us with the inspiration we need. Hey, Diana, I'm glad you're able to join. He will meet us on this path, and he will inspire us. He will bless our socks off if we are seeking him. Trust me, guys. Like I said, this has been a journey for us, and we should have been homeless four years ago. God has blessed us. God has been present every step of the way. Has it been easy? Heck no. Have we accomplished a lot in these years? Absolutely. Would I change anything and want it different? No. Because what came of these trials, what came of these goals, what came of this uh, molding and changing and... and um, came as a result of what we've walked out. So again, it's adjusting to our, what life throws us and, and being willing to be bigger than our problems or anything. So here we go. Without a plan for your life, life just happens to you. Some of us plan our lives one day at a time. We wake up, make our to-do list and dive into action. Some of us even plan our lives one week at a time. We review the calendar for the week, check our appointments, review our goals, and then get to work. One leadership expert writes, at the beginning of every month, I spend a half a day working on my calendar for the next 40 days. 40 days works for me rather than just 30. That way I get a jump on the next month and I don't get surprised. I begin by reviewing my travel schedule and planning activities with my family. Then I review my projects, lessons, and other objectives I want to accomplish during those five to six weeks. Then I start blocking out days and times for thinking, writing, working, meeting with people, etc. Set times to do fun things such as seeing a show, watching a ball game, or playing golf. I also set aside small blocks of time to compensate for the unexpected. By the time I'm done, I can tell you nearly everything I'll be doing, almost hour by hour during the coming weeks. This is one of the reasons I have been able to accomplish so much. The thought of planning 40 days at a time may overwhelm you, so start planning your day. Then aim for a week, a month, a year, etc. And if you consult God, he will show you which path to take. That is Proverbs 3.6. That to many could be very overwhelming because I see it at, for myself as a mom and a wife and a home-based business entrepreneur. I don't have a regimented routine. My schedule is constantly changing. 
It takes discipline to handle the unexpected. No matter how much unexpected time I put in my calendar, I can't always allot for that. Like it doesn't cover sometimes my expected adjustments. But the things I need to get done, I always get done. And that's because through discipline, I'm willing to adjust and change and alter my schedule and just keep going. I don't balk about it because when you balk about it and you fuss about it, that tends to take a lot of time and it wastes time and it doesn't, it doesn't help you get things accomplished. So just learning to flip on a dime, roll with it, go with it and, and get her done, um, that's really important. I mean, even if you do have an out of the house job, you can get a flat tire, your kids could be sick, you know, all kinds of things. So it's not just a home-based business either, but because of the traditional way we live, I do adjust a lot. But you can also learn to look at that as part of the adventure. Uh, my adjusting schedule keeps my days really, really real. <laughs> To say the least. Shelly says, my neighbor is in a wheelchair but uses a walker for short distances so she knits and keeps her mind busy. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Keeping the dexterity in her hands, keeping her eyes, and, and being able to move. You know, so many people, as they age, they start to have pains. And because they have pains, they stop moving. What they don't realize is as they sit, they intensify those pains because their muscles go into atrophy. Um, they are sitting and causing inflammation where when you move, you are actually doing yourself such a justice. So to be able to, she's keeping her body, her mind and everything nimble. And that's just awesome. That's awesome. That's so much what we need to do in life is to just keep going. When we lose our desire to go, and to faithfully move forward, that's when things start to decay. And it's not just our bodies, it's our minds. And this can happen to any at any age if we are permitting ourselves to hit a place of debilitation, whether it is because of the chaos in our life, the changes in our schedule, the lack of purpose because we aren't seeking to do new things or we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone. It's real, this all goes together and it's so important that we put it all together. Anna says, I'm at work and can just listen for a few minutes. Well, I'm glad you popped in and it's, I'm glad you're here. So I gotta watch my time today. Um, good morning, Nikki and Sanford. Oh, Diana says, <laughs> my fingers, there we go, are still like leather. Diana says, I need to go, but I have a quick prayer request. My daughter, Tristan, daughter, Tristan, and her family are sick with the flu and pink eye. They had quite a time with sickness this winter. Thanks, friends. I hope everyone has a good rest of the week. Tell them to put lavender across the bridge of their nose and up across here and they can put it along there under their eyes too that will help get rid of pink eye really fast and um i understand we've been fighting it too we're still fighting from what we got before christmas so these germs are just really awful and really wicked keep your immune system boosted guys uh this coronavirus and the stuff that's going on there i'm not sure about all of it but um one thing I will say is you've got to keep your immune systems heavily boosted and avoid going to places where there's a lot of people at this point um, if your immune system is not strong. I'm trying very hard to avoid places because my immune system is not what it should be. And, and Diana, we will definitely be praying for them. Have an awesome day, girlfriend. Love you. Shelly says her goal is to live to 100. That's so awesome. I think that's so cool. And, and her list of goals is long. And you know what's really cool? I love anything, sitting down with that and just listening and letting them share their life stories and the things that they have been doing and the things they've done. You know, so many um, 
you know, like I think of uh, Corey Ten Boom and um, there have been older folks that I have conversed with that did some of the coolest, coolest stuff. You know, in the different wars, they contributed in different ways. Um, what was really neat is Glenn's grandmother was a runner. And, and back in the day, you know, she she ran in dresses and she she competed i just think it's really awesome they have great stories and you know what it's a waste if we don't sit and listen to them so tap into that because also the stuff they have to share the things that they have done um you know they've got so much knowledge nested in there i, I love tapping into that you know glenn loves sitting and listening to old trappers and old cowboys and it's just fun, you know, they they lived really neat lives and so often those stories go untouched because we don't ask the right questions or we aren't willing to listen and a lot of times that happens when we're younger but tap into that, that's a great resource and I know, I'm sure you do, Shelly, and I think that's really cool that that's her goal. Tell her I'm cheering her on and I think that would be awesome and to keep going. But guys, I do need to jump off of here just in case we have some stuff to do. We got about a half an hour before we show the house. So keep us in your prayers. Keep us in your prayers for our solar batteries too. And and uh, just keep Glenn and I in your prayers. Moving forward here, we've got a lot on our plate and a lot of change and a different season. And, and we're really, together we are just super excited about it, but there's a lot and uh could just use your prayers pray for the mountain boy too he's traveling friday and uh here till monday and then traveling back so keep him in your prayers we have a long prayer list down below so please keep all those people in your prayers um please pray for mark and pat and starry who are going through treatments for multiple it is an incurable cancer and uh just pray and help them on their journey uh, it's it's not a pretty one cancer in and of itself is one nasty nasty illness um, and pray for Greg and his family also he is dealing with cancer as well and uh, if you guys have prayer needs please please do not hesitate to leave them in the comments below private message me or you can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com and no, we don't need to know all the details. We just need to know you need prayer. God will know what your needs are, but we will help lift you and uh, carry you in prayer. Also, uh, keep Chad in your prayers, please. Shelley says, I have worked with seniors all my life and have heard many stories. Some do not have family, so listening to their stories, they, they get to live on in you. Yeah, you know, it's so true. It's so, so true. And it is sad when they don't have any family left. Or, you know, a lot of times... You know, like with your neighbor, she wants to live to 100. When she reaches 100, most of her friends, if not all of her friends, will have already passed on. You know, so it becomes a lonely place. But people like your neighbor are going to meet new people wherever they go. They're just that kind of a spirit and, and will touch lives wherever they go. And you know what, guys? We have the ability to do the same thing regardless what our age is. Our stories have the ability to touch people. We will talk more about that next week and about the book I'm reading. But I'm going to say a prayer for us all and let you guys get back to your day. Papa, I just thank you so much for this beautiful weather. I thank you for these amazing people and our just awesome community that you've created. Thank you for filling up with the word today and what to share and how to guide. And I just ask that you... Wrap your loving arms around everybody present today and everybody listening to the replay and help them to learn to set goals and have plans and have dreams and not to be afraid to embrace them. And to everybody, so help them to progress in accomplishing their goals and their dreams and their plans as their personality enables them. So if that means that they need to take bite-sized baby steps to accomplish these things, to eliminate overwhelm, help them to do that. If the person is an absolute go-getter, help them to rein in so that they don't take on too much at one time and burn themselves out. 
give them all balance, give them all direction and just let them feel your presence, let them see your presence and just speak clearly to them. And just thank you for how you are going to heal and touch all of those on our prayer list that are in need of healing, how you're going to guide those and just give each and every one of those just what they need as they need it. But let them feel your love. Let them feel your presence. And just thank you for what you're doing in our community. Thank you for bringing us together. And thank you for what you're going to do as we faithful, as we move faithfully forward. And uh, just be with uh, Tristan and uh, uh, Diana's family uh, with the flu. And anyone else that's sick, just help build their immune system to keep them strong and to ward off all the germs that are going around, whether man-made or just existing. Just help us all and keep us safe and wrap your loving arms around us, put a hedge of protection around everyone and their family, and just thank you for what you're going to do in our lives, and may your will be done. We love you and ask all this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Have a fabulous day. And I did not say it, but I did say it in my prayer. You know, attacking goals and plans and dreams, some people just don't know where to begin. The thing is, make a list. Know what you want and want it. Visualize it. See it. Don't just visualize it out there. Visualize yourself having already accomplished it. And, and that you're on the other side cheering someone else on to do the same thing. There's some a great power in that. And don't discourage yourself. Don't overwhelm yourself by taking on too much at a time. Or being discouraged because your schedule and everything is going pattywampus. It's going to happen. Create the habit of getting back on track. You can do this. And trust me, when you have plans, goals, and dreams, you have a purpose. You have a reason to get up in the morning and you have something driving you. And what you are doing is you are leading by example because people are watching you. Trust me. Regardless if they're this little or this, you're being watched. And that's why it's important that we walk the walk and talk the talk in everything we do. So start writing your goals and plans and dreams down and start attacking them one day at a time, one step at a time, one second at a time, depending on your personality and what your needs are. But you can do this, and trust me, there is so much good on the other side and so much good in having a plan. So guys, I love you dearly. Have an awesome day, and if you don't have sunshine, I'm sharing it with you. <laughs> I need sunshine and I am like totally renewed today just because the sun's shining. So have a blessed day. I love you all. God bless.